Today on CTV News, a popular but dangerous summertime activity has crews searching the water for a 22-year-old man. Plus, police identify a man killed while crossing the street last night. And staff and residents at a health centre set for closure say they're sickened after a visit from Alberta's health minister. CTV News with Alicia Fieldberg. Hello. Recovery efforts are underway after a 22-year-old man drowned near Raymond. It happened around 5 o'clock last night at an irrigation canal where the victim and friends were sliding down a cement drop. As Kayla Carr reports, it's a popular summertime activity, but it's also illegal. On a memorial page, friends describe 22-year-old Brandon Moore as a confident young man with a great smile, good sense of humor, and a passion for life. The McCain's employee drowned while sliding down a cement canal near Raymond Wednesday night. The area known as Cooper's Drop is a popular cooling off spot in the summer. Police say over the last few years, more and more people are using the spillway as a slide. And it isn't just happening in southern Alberta. An online video from Illinois shows a group of teenagers doing the same thing. There are dozens more like it. Hey, who's that? Police say while it may be fun, it's also extremely dangerous. When you hit the bottom where the water starts curling in the undertow, you get into the undertow and you can't get out. It's also illegal. The company that owns the canal has repaired the access fence dozens of times. Earlier in the day, Mounties were at Cooper's Drop handing out tickets for trespassing. We've warned people in the past not to come here, stay out of this, uh, this area because it's dangerous and unfortunately today we're seeing exactly what uh, the consequences are. Raymond fire officials spent Wednesday night combing the waters looking for Moore's body before resuming the search alongside Lethbridge divers this afternoon. Police say it's a tragedy, but one they hope others will learn from. Stay off of these, the irrigation canal. Stay out of them, stay off. This is not a place to come and, and cool off and have fun. Please stay away. Kayla Carr, CTV News, Raymond. Police say Moore didn't know how to swim. At this time, search crews have yet to recover Moore's body. Regional police are investigating after a man's body was found in a north side alley this afternoon. Police were called to the 1600 block of First Avenue North shortly after 11. In the alley, they found a 61-year-old man's body. They were told the man has no fixed address, but that's about all we know right now. Officers spent a couple of hours speaking with neighbours and gathering ed evidence. An autopsy has been set for tomorrow to determine the cause. A man has died from his injuries after being hit by a car last night in South Lethbridge. Police identified the man as 53-year-old Wesley Raymond Finley of Lethbridge. Finley was crossing Mayor McGrath Drive in the 1100 block when he was struck by a car in the southbound lane. He was taken to Chinook Regional Hospital, then transferred by STARS to Foothills Hospital in Calgary. He passed away this morning. The driver and passengers in the car weren't injured. Police say speed wasn't a factor and continue to investigate. Lethbridge police have charged a second man in connection with a home invasion robbery. Lethbridge Regional Police already issued an arrest warrant for 25-year-old Dan Frawley. Now they're also charging 20-year-old Aaron Lee Michael Sukachoff. On August 1st, two men broke into a home along the 600 block of 15th Street South. Once inside, the suspects threatened the homeowner and left with cash. Officers say this was a targeted attack related to the drug trade. Sukachov is in custody and had his first scheduled court appearance today. Police are still looking for Frawley and say he may be driving a black Honda Civic. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call Lethbridge Police or Crime Stoppers. A 24-year-old man is facing charges after an assault at a home along Micmac Boulevard early Wednesday morning. Police were called to the West Winds apartment complex around 3 a.m. Officers say a man cut a 20-year-old with a piece of glass during a fight. A 21-year-old male who intervened was also assaulted. When police asked the suspect to come out of the home, he lit a mattress on fire. 
Jason Samuel McRae faces several charges, including assault with a weapon, unlawful confinement, and failing to comply with the probation order. A bail hearing has been set over for a medicine hat man charged with the murder of a missing 23-year-old nursing student. 34-year-old Jarison Stepanski's case was in Medicine Hat Court today. Stepanski is charged with second-degree murder in the death of Amy Lewis. She hasn't been seen since June 11th. Despite a massive search, Lewis's body has never been found. Police say they do have evidence that Lewis is deceased. Stepanski's bail hearing was set over until August 23rd. A judge has ordered a dangerous offender assessment for a man who abducted a young boy last year. In September, Randall Hopley took Keenan Hebert from his home in Sparwood, B.C. The three-year-old was held in a cabin for four days before Hopley returned him home. Today, a Cranbrook judge ruled Hopley was just lucky in choosing his victim. He says the Heberts are nothing short of remarkable in their ability to move on and to forgive. The judge said just because Keenan wasn't significantly harmed, stealing a young boy out of his bed is the type of offense that could cause severe long-term psychological harm. Lethbridge police are investigating a report that a small dog died after eating poison food in the Legacy Ridge area. Neighbors say the pug was found unconscious in the backyard. A vet discovered what seemed to be a bleach-soaked wiener inside the dog. Police advise pet owners to always keep an eye on their dogs so they don't eat strange food. Anyone with information about this incident is asked to contact police or Crime Stoppers. Well, it seems like there's relief ahead for all those people who are sick of the sweltering heat. Is it going to go back to average temperatures, Dory? It is, uh, Alicia. Actually, below average temperatures. Average is 26 for this time of year. It's not going to happen till Tuesday as far as a real dip in the temperatures, but we're gradually going to see a slide down. You'll see that reflected in the five-day forecast. The weekend is still looking nice and warm, above average temperatures for the most part, but by Tuesday, it's looking like rain. And then I'll get complaints about that. So, you know, it's all good. <laughs> I'll have all the details coming up in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Dory. A long overdue visit by Alberta Health Minister Fred Horn has only added more fuel to the fire over a controversial decision to close a continuing care centre in Carmengay. For the past month, local residents have been trying to get Horn to visit the centre, hoping it would convince the government to review the planned closure. But now, residents are calling the tour a waste of time and even self-serving. Terry Vogt reports. I feel like I've just been gut punched, to be honest. Uh... That's how Ginger Heglin Dietz describes her reaction to a visit by Alberta Health Minister Fred Horn. The health minister says he came to the small town of Carmengay to talk to residents, staff and families to get a sense of how closure of the Little Bull Continuing Care Centre was being dealt with by Alberta Health Services. I want to make sure that this uh, people are being treated well with respect and with dignity. That's where my focus is and those are the kinds of questions that I ask of Alberta Health Services. And it started off well. Heglin Dietz and her grandma Agnes spent 20 minutes with the health minister, explaining why the center shouldn't be closed, outlining her concerns over the lack of consultation, unanswered questions, the shortage of information by Alberta health officials. I was under the impression from how he spoke to me that he thought there was something wrong with the communication and that something might be fishy going on and he was going to look into it. So to find out now that everything's just the same, um, I'm not even sure why he bothered even coming down here except to say that he did. Obviously the care that's delivered here is, is very, very good. But uh, it is a, uh, a small facility and, and um, you know, a decision has been made that it, it will ultimately close. Family uh, members say that message was not the one they were getting only five minutes earlier during the face-to-face -face meetings. They came away feeling hopeful that the decision would at least be reviewed. Pretty disheartening to have somebody come in there and just shows, uh, I guess, a false sense of security they try to leave you with so that everybody was almost feeling warm and fuzzy when they left. That, you know, he'd taken the time, and I, I did respect him for coming out to do that, but if his mind was already set, why did he just come out to, just to say he'd done it? I'm disappointed to hear that we're still closed. I'd like to have um, a review of the numbers and the minutes that have led up to this. The health minister says he understands closing the centre is a difficult thing for the community, 
And Fred Horn says the government is first and foremost concerned about making sure seniors are getting the best possible quality of life that Alberta has to offer. But some local residents are now calling his visit here selfish and self-serving. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Carmen Gay. Yesterday's visit by the health minister was unannounced and unexpected by local residents. They say if the government was really interested in hearing from people impacted, officials would have arranged a community meeting. And now let's take a look at the markets.